Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. In today's video, I am going to talk about why we should be aware of how to design an earthquake resistance structure and I would like to express my support and my condolences for the people of Turkey and Syria who have been through a massive massive earthquake and tens and thousands of people have lost their homes and lives. So, I would like to request all the viewers of this video that if you could go ahead and support these countries go ahead and support i have tagged few links in the description all the links are trusted all the links are genuine links so you can go ahead and if you are capable enough and if you can uh, help by donating some money or something to these people and this country uh, definitely we should go ahead and help them out and guys without any delays let's get started with the video So guys, as an architect and a designer, we should be aware of how to design a structure which is earthquake resistant and will withstand a certain amount of earthquake. We are not expected to be the masters of this, but we are expected to have certain kind of knowledge about these structures. So let's get started with the step number one before designing a structure what you should know about that area and what you should study that is understanding the seismic hazard of that region or the area that you are going to build in this includes the study of seismic zone history of that area with earthquake and likelihood of an earthquake from a seismology lab or government seismology center this information is important in determining the design requirements for the building including maximum ground acceleration, peak ground movement, and spectral ground motion. The next step is to design the building to withstand the expected ground motion. The design should ensure that the building can remain standing during and after an earthquake without collapsing or suffering significant damage. This can be achieved through use of reinforced concrete and steel structure and by ensuring the building has a regular symmetric shape. The building should be designed to be flexible, allowing it to move slightly during an earthquake without breaking. Foundation A strong foundation is essential for an earthquake resistant building. The foundation should be capable to withstand lateral, generated, uh, lateral forces generated by an earthquake. This can be also achieved by seismic isolation of the foundation. So, this principle basically applies to the foundation where the foundation is isolated from uh, the entire building by the help of a different method such as where a rubber padding is used between uh, the column and the foundation intersection which lets the foundation move along with the ground and producing very less force on the entire building absorbing the majority of the, uh, of the shock waves that are coming from the earthquake Motion dampers and structural bracing are most are mostly diagonal structural members meant to take the shock of an earthquake. They have a lot of tensile strength which lets them deform and take the shock away from the columns and the beams. Even hydraulic dampers are one of the great solutions that are used in majority of the buildings in Japan. So what hydraulic dampers do is they isolate the entire building from the foundation and they move along with the ground, maintaining the building in the same position, but uh, the foundation itself moves along with the ground. So almost very negligible amount of shock wave is absorbed by the building. The entire shock wave is absorbed by the foundation itself. Building material. The building material used in construction should also be earthquake resistant. Reinforced concrete and steel are the most commonly used material for this purpose as they have a high strength to weight ratio and are ductile, meaning they are deformed without breaking. Non-structural component. Non-structural components such as partition, ceiling, cladding, can also play a significant role in overall earthquake resistance of a building. These components should securely attach to a structural system and designed to withstand the forces generated by an earthquake. Building code compliance. 
Finally, it is essential to ensure that building design complies with relevant building codes and standards. Building codes provide maximum requirements of the design and construction of the building, including the use of earthquake resistant materials and systems. In conclusion, the building earthquake resistant uh, in conclusion, building earthquake resistant structure is a complex and challenging task, but it is essential to ensure the safety and well-being of the people who occupy these buildings. By following these essential steps and principles, we can design a and construct a building that can withstand the force of an earthquake. And guys, similar thing was also uh, in place, like the building code and everything is in place for Turkey also. But as we know, as Indians, if you are from India, if you are watching this video, you know, we bend the rule, we mend the rule and we bribe people. We, uh, you know, don't follow the actual bylaws. Not even the engineers in government departments are following those bylaws. This is the reason like most of the disaster happens when people ignore the bylaws, when government ignores the bylaws, when people find loopholes in the bylaws. They are there in place for a reason. Turkish has its own seismic uh, code, which is called Turkish Seismic Code, that is TSC. And uh, there, all the building, if you are constructing a building over there, it has to go through that uh, department and all the codes are checked, all the parameters of the buildings are checked, all the uh, categories of the buildings are divided into that and where that building is located based on that, your structural system should be designed. So all these things were in place but still the level of disaster is so high. So there were few loopholes that people used for their benefits, government used it for their benefit and people suffered when the time actually came for such things. So as an architect and designer, we should be aware and we should be strict when it comes to such crucial part of the structure. We can't let the things just slip by. We have to rope in the best structural engineers. We have to listen to the structural engineers and the structural designers because they come from a place where they know how a building can be designed to be earthquake resistant. For an example, we can even learn a lot from Japan. They have had earthquakes, I think so, from more than a century. And they have become a survivor of earthquakes. The last earthquake, the major earthquake that hit Japan was 9.1 magnitude. I'm, I'm damn sure if that earthquake would have happened in India, it shouldn't, but in India or anywhere around the world, the entire country would have been flattened out. But they survived. They have some very strict, very stringent way of designing an earthquake resistant building and there is a lot more to learn from their designing types and designing structures. I will be making a specific video on the design types and structural designs in Japan so we can learn from them like you know how we can efficiently design high-rise buildings, bungalows and small residential apartments also by using those techniques in our structures. So guys, this was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video or learned something from this video that was helpful for you. And if you did, go ahead, hit a like and subscribe to my channel. So take care of yourself and see you soon guys. Bye-bye.